Thomas Edward Patrick Brady. Junior, the greatest quarterback of all time. He's won seven Super Bowls, set almost every imaginable passing record, and has made probably over a million dollars, or something like that. But what I find truly interesting about Tom's story is that he isn't that special of an athlete. It's not like he can throw the ball further than anyone else, and he's probably the slowest player on every team he's ever been on. Giannis Antetokounmpo is superhuman. J.J. Watt looks like if a muscle came to life and started talking. But on the surface, Tom just kind of looks like a guy. In fact, he's so unassuming as an athlete that almost 200 people were picked ahead of him the year he was drafted. And he played longer than every single one of them. In many ways, he got better as he got older. His face changed shape like six times. Everything he's doing defies all logic. So what the hell is his secret? Is he a cyborg? A time traveler? Was he an experiment created in some kind of football laboratory? Or is all of his success attributed to his famously specific diet? This dude hasn't had sugar in like 14 years. No wonder he's able to pull off the impossible. I had a toaster strudel for breakfast and now my tummy hurts. But why am I making this video? Well, because a few days ago on February 1st, Tom Brady finally retired from the NFL, which means someone has to take his place. And that's where I come in. Slightly above average height? Check. Total underdog story? Check. Lives within reasonable driving distance of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers practice facility? Check. And just like Tom, everything I do, I do for my son. My son is four inches tall, he lives in this box, and as of one minute ago, he's now available for purchase for a limited time at U2s.com. But if I'm gonna become the new starting quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I'll need to eat like Tom. I'll need to train like Tom at least for about a month, that should do it. So starting on February 14th, the day after the Super Bowl, uh, because I'm probably gonna eat a lot of crap that night, I will begin my transformation. But first, I have to prepare. <laughs> Like a lot of mega popular athletes do, Sweet Thomas has very much turned his identity into a brand. It's called the TB12 method. He has two books about it, he has his own recipes, his own workout gear, and supplements, and hats, and podcasts, and training centers, and vital fit tart cherry. Congrats, Tom! While this chapter is closing, the best is yet to come. You know, I hate to say it. But I don't think that's true. Some people just peak early in life. There's nothing wrong with that. You think anyone's gonna give a shit about me in 20 years? Hell no. I gotta savor this while I can. So this says get started, but then there's so much shit here that I don't even know where to begin. Oh wait. Yeah, I do. I'm getting the big Tom. Tom Brady drinks 200 to 300 ounces of water on active days. Jesus Christ. I feel like I'm gonna have to get a second bladder surgically inserted into my body if I drink this much water. Oh, here we go. They have starter packs. Here's what people are saying. But it's not customer testimony. It's just their employees. No biases here. Guys, people have been raving about my YouTube videos. Don't believe me? Just ask my mom. You know, I am actually wondering what Brian thinks. Hey everyone, hey. Brian Hart here, body coach down in uh, Tampa Bay. By far my favorite product that TB12 has is the TB12 electrolytes. Helps me stay hydrated, gives me energy, prevents muscle cramping, tastes great. Does it? I saw that eye roll. Believe me, this stuff is awesome. TB12 plant-based protein, right. TB12 omega. Okay. One of the products that I really have loved recently is the TB12 sleep. And I don't really struggle to sleep or go to sleep. Um, this stuff is amazing. Um, I don't need it, and I've never actually taken it before, but Tom said I had to throw in a fourth thing, and so I just picked one randomly. I wake up every morning feeling awesome after I take that TB12 sleep. Yeah, I can tell. You're like a ball of energy. Feel free to go to TB12sports.com. What a coincidence. That's a website I was already on. Oh. I guess I should... Probably just get the Tom pack. Sorry, Brian. In his honor, I will at least get his favorite flavor of electrolytes, and I will think about you every time I drink them. Okay, so it's $200, and that's just the first page. It's gonna be another 216 just for the equipment. That at least seems more reasonable. Uh, what was the other one? Vitamins and protein powder. And I'm supposed to buy that every month? Well, it's a good thing I'm only doing this for one. Oh, you have to subscribe to it? But what if I don't want to? Why is it $600? I got the Tom pack, the starter home gym pack should be 425 and it is 600. What the fuck, Tom? I mean, yeah, I have the water bottle.
fireball in here too, but that's only 65. <laughs> oh, I see. Once you go to check out, they sneakily raise the price of the exercise equipment by $111. That's cool. No, I get it. I would do the same thing if I was the worst. You know what though? I have to suck it up. I'm trying to change my life here. I want to live to be 300 years old and you can't put a price on that. So I guess I'm already out $600 and I haven't even bought any food yet. It's funny, I've always heard the main criticism of the TB12 brand is that it's overly expensive and inaccessible to the average person, but I actually think we're off to a great start. Oh my God, I still have to buy the book, I almost forgot. They're sold out on the website, so I have to settle for an acceptable used copy from Amazon. Would I like to spend half of that on a new copy? Of course I would. But then I won't get it for a month and I'm trying to start this diet in a few days. What are you gonna do? Before I forget, I should also go ahead and cancel my subscriptions while I'm here. Luckily, they've made it as difficult as possible by making you do one at a time. Hello. My first impression when I saw this in front of my door was that this box is way bigger than I thought it would be. And then I remembered I bought the Big Tom. So I'm picturing that that's pretty much taking up most of the space. It's just like a giant fat water bottle and then everything else is just pushed into the corner. I forgot my box cutter, I'll be right back. <clears throat> Best thing about the moon pod is how easy it is to get up. Sorry about that. There's the big Tom. There it is. Wow, these are fancy glass jars. Everything is kind of dusty, um, which is fun. Oh. <laughs> because this popped open and there's very expensive protein dust all over this box. And I got my electrolytes, my vibrating pliability sphere. <laughs> so that's all the stuff that I put in my body. Now for what I put my body on top of. To be honest, I kind of blindly just bought the starter kit. I didn't really look at what was in it. I just assumed, you know, if this is good for Tom, it's good for me. But I did end up doubling up on water bottles and I don't know what anything else is. Don't know why they gave me a little bag when clearly that's not big enough to put all this stuff in. I got a vibrating pliability sphere and also a vibrating pliability roller. Lots of different shapes in which I can vibrate. This is just like a phone stand that they threw in here. Don't know what I was expecting. It's gonna be a journey figuring out what to do with all this crap. So we got some pills to pop here. Thanks, Tom, for that. We've got sleep, which is pretty self-explanatory. I'll try this once, but I'm probably not gonna take this every night because I don't like melatonin. It makes me feel weird and gives me really crazy dreams and I don't want that. But then you've got the other two. This one is like brain pills. Daily support for mind, body performance. And then the other one is for like joint support. But this is one I'm really intrigued by. For like a year, I used to take something called Alpha Brain and I'm pretty sure it was just a placebo, but I would take it every time I filmed or wrote anything. And I felt like it helped, like I could think more clearly, but again, it might've just been, I told myself that I would be more focused and then I was more focused, so who's to say? But this shit was personally engineered by the greatest quarterback of all time. And if anyone knows something about brain performance, it's Tom Brady. So let's see what happens. I don't know, I didn't really, whoa! What's going on? Uh, I have so many thoughts. I think I'm finally using 100% of my brain, just like Bradley Cooper in that Limitless movie. Oh my God, the ideas. I can't stop them. Uh, hey, sorry to bother you. I know you're at work right now, but I had to call you. I just thought of a new invention. Silent ice. It's just like regular ice, but it doesn't make any noise. I did it, I finally finished my book. Wow, what a productive day. I even managed to move my couch into the middle of the room like I've been meaning to. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and hit the hay. Uh, never mind. It has been four minutes. I don't really know what to say about the supplements because I've taken them a bunch now and I kind of feel the same. But I've also been taking multivitamins every day for several years and those don't make me feel any different. So does that mean I should stop taking them? It's hard to judge something that is supposed to have this like silent effect on your body. So they may not actually do anything, but at least they're very expensive. The best thing about them though, is that they don't taste like anything because you're also supposed to drink these electrolytes every day 
multiple times a day, first thing you do when you wake up. I excitedly tried the lemon one first, and let me just tell you, it is one of the grossest things I've ever tasted in my life. It tastes great. It doesn't taste so much like lemonade as it does lemon pledge. I did actually just notice today that they also sent me the same thing, but in packet form. So I'm pretty sure there's like a powder instead of something that's already a liquid. Maybe that'll make it taste better. Oh, thank God. Okay, this is way better. This is a huge relief because <laughs> drinking electrolytes is very much part of Tom's daily routine. And I physically was not able to drink the other one. It was so gross. And it's not like, oh, it doesn't taste like Gatorade. This isn't very good. I don't need it to taste like Gatorade. I don't need it to taste sweet. Honestly, I don't need it to taste like anything. Good thing they also have one called unflavored. This has no flavor. It's just gonna go in my water. I'm not even gonna notice it's there. It's just gonna taste like nothing, right? No, this shit just tastes like salt. I'm just relieved that a lot of the reviews say the same thing and I'm not the only one going crazy here. This person said it tasted like watered down cough syrup. That's a good description. I love Tom, but I threw away the electrolytes terrible taste. The electrolytes did not agree with me and I agree with you. I think when I run out of these packets, I'll just buy a different brand of electrolytes and hope they don't also taste like shit. As previously discussed, Tom Brady loves water. You think this is a lot? This jug that weighs almost five pounds when full? Well, he drinks five of these every day. My goal for this has been to at least drink three of these a day because that's still on the low end of the spectrum. And three a day is doable, but uh, it's also a lot. There are a few things that I don't love about the water bottle. For one, it takes about 90 seconds for me to fill it up all the way because it's so goddamn big. It's also so heavy and bulky that you need to use two hands to drink out of it and it makes you look like a baby drinking out of a sippy cup. It's too wide to fit in a cup holder so it kind of just jostles around in my car as I drive. And unless it's more than halfway full, I can't drink out of it while I drive without it hitting the ceiling. But do you think I'm gonna ever drive somewhere without having a little beverage in my car? Hell no. But all of that pales in comparison to the worst thing about drinking this much water, which is that I now pee roughly 600 times per day. Sometimes I'll just drink and pee at the same time because I know I'm gonna have to do it in five minutes anyway. It really makes me mad that Amanda and I thought it would be funny to have the Pledge of Allegiance in our guest bathroom. But now the joke's on me because I have to recite it every time I go in there. I did the math and I don't think I've gone an entire two hour period without having to go to the bathroom. And that made me realize that Tom Brady pees his pants. It's not like they have a bathroom on the sideline. It's not like you can call a timeout to do a potty break. This legend, this sports hero, has been running around on the field with piss in his uniform. Gross! I looked up to you, man. Anyway, sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but someone had to say something. This book's not too crazy. A lot of the stuff I had heard before, like how he was born on a spaceship and came out the womb holding a football. But the thing that's weird about this is like, this is supposed to be the Tom Brady Bible. But there are things I've read online about him that contradict some of the stuff I've read in here. Like apparently he doesn't eat nightshades, peppers, tomatoes, but then there's recipes in here that include those things. He's famously on a plant-based diet, but almost all the recipes have meat in them. So maybe this book is not as all in encompassing as I hope. It might be because they didn't want to include every restriction here uh, so as to not scare people off. Or maybe it's that some of the things Tom Brady believes in aren't actually backed up by science. So they're like, hey, just cause Tom does that doesn't mean you have to too. You know, I've read a bunch of books like this before. A bunch. I've read like two books like this before. And the funny thing is, I feel like I always agree with almost everything they say. I just uh, forget to actually do it. We all have one body and one life and you should make it a priority to treat that body and life as respectfully as possible. And it's like, of course, what a beautiful mindset. Of course, I'm going to only eat the healthiest foods I can so my body can function as healthily and as prosperously as possible. And oh my God, is it 1 a.m. already? I'm gonna have a snack. Part of the reason I wanted to make this video is just to force myself to do it. I'm so bad at self-discipline, but I'm really good at making excuses. Like, I've had a long day today. I deserve this. I deserve to go to Twisty Treat. Twisty Treat is a restaurant shaped like ice cream 
because they sell ice cream. Obviously, life would be really fucking boring if you never ate anything fun, but there has to be a balance to it. Uh, one that I rarely achieve. But one thing I've realized as an adult is that if I don't hold myself accountable, no one else will because it's not their responsibility, it's mine. I have to do it, so I will do it. So let's start off with what you're not allowed to eat. You're not allowed to have dairy, or bread, or fast food, or soda, or things with added sugar, or overly processed foods that have a bunch of preservatives. Let me tell you the betrayal I felt when I found out these snap peas aren't actually healthy at all. They're not even real peas. They're just cleverly engineered to look like them. Everything is always too good to be true. Whatever, I'm not mad. You can have alcohol, but in extreme moderation. And I just went ahead and didn't have any because beer makes me want pizza. You can only have a little bit of caffeine, which thankfully wasn't much of a change for me. Something happened a couple years ago, and ever since then I've had an extremely low tolerance to caffeine, even though I drink coffee every single day. But I usually don't even finish one cup, because I know if I drink it all, I'm gonna get all jittery and probably end up with a headache. You know what my Starbucks order is? I get a venti cold brew and then slowly drink it over the course of four days. That's not a joke, that's just my life. As far as what you are supposed to eat, it's pretty much a lot of vegetables all the time. Uh, mostly just vegetables, actually. And you have to buy organic produce, preferably sourced locally, otherwise Tom will come to your house and kill you. According to the book, it's because non-organic food tends to have less nutrients in it, and also when food has to travel really far, it loses nutrients. I don't know how true that is, but man, was it depressing to have to ignore all the regular fruit that was on sale so I could get the special version of it. So I'll get to the meals themselves in a little bit, but there were two things that I've eaten every single day. Number one, I have a smoothie with spinach and blueberries and most of a banana and almond butter and tom powder and Greek yogurt and almond milk. These I don't mind at all. They taste really good and they fill me up for a few hours. I actually used to make smoothies like this all the time until one day our blender broke and instead of buying a new one, I was just like, all right, well, guess I'm not doing that anymore. The hardest thing about these smoothies is that you always run out of different ingredients at different times. And it's like, am I really gonna go to the store right now just to get blueberries? For the sake of this video, yes. Yes, I am. The other thing I get to eat every single day is homemade guacamole. This is, for some reason, an absolute staple of the TB12 diet. Well, it's a good thing finding perfectly ripe avocados every single day isn't like hard to do or anything. Otherwise, this would be really annoying. For me, this was the first major example of this diet being 100 times more doable if you have someone else go buy ingredients and prepare food for you. Tom's not going to the grocery store. He throws a few footballs around and then yells, feed me, and an army of TB12 assistants come to shovel kale into his mouth. Now, if you're like me, you might be thinking, guacamole every day? That sounds awesome. But remember, you can't eat them with chips. That would be too easy. So usually I just add it to whatever meal I'm eating or I'll dip celery or carrots into it and scarf it down that way. As far as grocery trips go, I've been doing them a lot. Uh, basically every two to four days. I probably could have consolidated some of these trips, but I get overwhelmed when my grocery list is way too long, so I would split it up into smaller trips and only get like one or two meals at a time. And I will say the meals in this book are all pretty good. This salad is stupidly easy to make, so that's been a go-to for me. The cauliflower you make with this salmon is fucking great, so I don't even mind the fact that you have to eat like 12 pounds of it every time. And the chicken and lentils recipe is really good too, although the Dijon mustard flavor can be a little bit much when you're having leftovers, and at that point, it has soaked into every single ingredient. I even got to make my own hummus. That was pretty fun. So really, I have almost nothing but good things to say about all of these recipes, um, except there is the one. I tried making one of Tom's famous fish taco bowls and everything went wrong. The cod completely fell apart as I was trying to cook it, so it was basically ground fish. The sauce was way too runny and just tasted like sesame seeds. The beans were all wet. The worst part is that it's been about 14 hours and the whole house smells like fish. 
still. To make my life a little bit easier, I have been ordering the same meal prep service that I've used for a while now. Only where before I was mostly doing it out of convenience, now I have to make sure I'm pretty much only eating chicken and vegetables or fish and vegetables. This takes care of five lunches a week, so I only have to worry about breakfast and dinner and then what I'm gonna eat on the weekend. I would say my biggest takeaway so far is that what you do eat is a lot more important than what you don't eat. I've had a couple of two or three day stretches in here where I don't really have the energy to cook, so then I don't eat enough, so then I don't have any energy, so then I don't cook any food. It's not enough to just not eat sugar. Just because I'm not eating McDonald's doesn't mean I'm doing a good job or being healthy. I need to have like a checklist of things that I do eat every single day. Otherwise, it's inevitable that I end up going crazy one night and eating half a block of cheese at 1 a.m. Am I saying that because that's what I did last night? Yes. But I'm not gonna beat myself up over it. I'm just gonna go outside and spike some footballs and get right back on track. So I'm about two weeks into eating like Tom Brady and I can't say a lot has changed. Um, I did notice that I've started Loading. I don't really know how I'm doing it. I just know that whenever I go to walk somewhere, I am now levitating off the ground. If I had to guess, I would assume that my body has simply transcended past the need for gravity, which is cool. Um, I don't think I used to be able to do that. At least not that I remember. I love how this box they gave me is just filled to the brim with crap, and yet there's no instruction manual of any kind. I don't know what any of this stuff does. I mean, I know what this bag does. I've used a bag before. So I was looking at some of the exercises in the book, and I kept getting confused on like, okay, I see that you're supposed to pull on the rope, but what is the rope attached to? And the photos don't help, because it's sort of just fades off into the void. But I realized one of the things in here was this like door strap. So I should be able to strap this to my door and then connect things to it, hopefully without breaking the door in the process. The issue with this for me though, is most of the doors in my house, there's not a lot of room in front of them to maneuver and do things. So I'm gonna have to be doing most of my workouts in my laundry room. I'm realizing maybe I didn't put the camera in the right spot for this because I did the whole thing and I don't think you could see any of it. All right, looks pretty good, I think. Still worried this is somehow gonna break my door? If it does, I'll just ask Tom to buy me a new one. I now have something else I'm deathly afraid of, which is that while I'm doing one of these exercises, the back will snap propel forward into the back of my head and I will immediately die. The good news is if that does happen, I will at least get it on camera. I should probably clue you in on what's going on here. So something that seems to be unique to Tom's workout is his emphasis on pliability. And I'll let him explain it for me. Pliability is at the core of the TB12 lifestyle. Use a TB12 vibrating pliability roller or sphere to target the muscle groups you're using. So basically before and after every workout, I gotta roll this thing all over my muscles. There are two parts to pliability. Active muscle work, active muscle work, active muscle work. This is how you play football. Finally, with just a few days left, having transformed into the best shape of my adult life, which unfortunately does not mean anything, it's time to hit the field. Hi, my name's Drew Gooden. I'm over four feet tall, and this is my audition for the role of quarterback. Dear Roger Goodell, President of football. I am politely demanding that you have me signed to one or all NFL teams as soon as possible. Obviously, my talent and positional versatility should speak for themselves, but I also have other attributes I can bring to the table that will make me instantly marketable as the new face of the league. Number one, I'm charitable. When this crazed fan came up to me and demanded my attention, I didn't throw a hundred footballs at her face until she went away, even though I wanted to. I took the time to take multiple photos with her, a memory I'm sure she'll treasure forever. Reason number two, I'm already friends with several Hall of Fame athletes like Rob Gronkowski, Jeff Gordon, and Air Bud from the movie Air Bud. I believe these connections will help me thrive in the NFL. After all, it's a relationship game, not a football game. Reason number three, I think I could do a touchdown dance. And the final and most important reason why I should be immediately given a lifetime contract is that I am desperate for money. Over the past month, I have spent all of my life savings trying to do the Tom Brady diet, and now my house is being foreclosed. Not to be nosy or anything, but I saw how much you're giving some of these other guys, and I decided, can I have some? I'll do any position, I'll even be punter. 
Please let me play. Anyway, I hope you consider me for the role of quarterback. Have a wonderful day. What the fuck? You're telling me I lost five pounds and felt great for a month and I have nothing to show for it because I can't even play professional football? I'll get you, Tom. Ooh, I just know for a fact that I am the person most negatively affected by this. Okay, so maybe I am the person second most negatively affected by this. So I'm gonna break down my final thoughts on this by answering two questions. Number one, is the TB12 diet good? Yeah. With the exception of the one disaster, all the meals were tasty and they got easier to prepare the more I made them. And a lot of the restrictions are easier to pull off than it seemed at first, as long as you don't think about what you're missing out on. Like it's really daunting when you start off and you think, oh man, I can't have this or this or this. But then you get going and you're just focusing on the food that you are making and you realize it's been two weeks since you thought about pizza. I'm proud to say I only cracked twice. There was the cheese incident and I also uh, went to Taco Bell one day because I was kind of going through it. But I think it's good to at least have one meal every once in a while that you can look forward to. Otherwise, you're going to lose motivation pretty fast. In hindsight, yeah, maybe I should have swung for something better than a five-layer burrito, but at the time, it's all I could think about. Other than that, the meals were all just good enough to keep me from daydreaming about junk food. But the other question is, given the financial and time investment necessary to pull this diet off, how feasible is it? And that's a little bit trickier. It would be dumb of me to ignore the obvious advantage that I had while doing this, which is that I was able to put my job on hold for a while by turning the diet into my job. And even still, there were days where I'm like, fuck, it's five o'clock already? I don't want to cook. I just made food yesterday and now I got to do it again? <sighs> When will it end? And I tried to imagine what it would have been like to try to do this back when I had a 45 minute commute to my carpentry job, where I'd be lucky to get home before six o'clock and I'm tired and I'm sore and now I have to prepare this complicated ass meal. And whoops, our broccoli went bad. Should I go to Publix? No, I'm gonna go to Chipotle for the third day in a row. You know what would be nice? If there were more convenient, healthy food options. The best I could find around me is a place called Fresh Kitchen, and it's pretty good, don't get me wrong, but the bowls are like $15. Also, I don't even know if that place is healthy. Did you know? that restaurants aren't required to provide nutritional information unless they have over 20 locations. I didn't know that till I tried to look it up. And yeah, you can always drive through somewhere to get a fast food salad, but not only do I not want to eat salad every day, but a lot of the time, the salads have more calories than the regular food that they sell. Without a doubt, the best way to follow the TB12 diet is to have multiple fresh cooked meals every single day. And the easiest way to do that is to pay someone to cook them for you. But I'm not gonna do that, and you're not gonna do that, so who the fuck is gonna do that? Following this diet is possible, but it's expensive, and it's time consuming, and you have to sacrifice a lot of convenience in order to make it work. And just like with all diets, you have to be patient. If you're hoping to lose weight, it could take two weeks before you even move the needle at all. So really, in the short term, there are almost no noticeable differences. Like, I remember my dad asking me after a couple weeks how I felt, and I thought about it, and I was like, just kinda, Normal, I think. For some reason, I guess I thought, I'm eating all these superfoods. I'm gonna feel amazing. These omega-3s are gonna be coursing through my veins. But I realized it's more so just an absence of feeling bad. It's been a week or so since I officially finished doing the diet for a month, and I've tried not to stray too far from it since then, but I've loosened up the restrictions. Like the other day, I had a milkshake, and it was fucking delicious. It was so good. I don't regret it at all. But I felt like garbage afterward. I was in a bad mood. I was groggy and irritable and I went to bed really early for some reason. Same thing happened when we had pizza a few days later. It was the best pizza I've ever had in my life. At least it felt like it at the time, you know how it is. But it also made me feel like shit. I was so full, but I was also really grumpy. I kept getting annoyed at everything. It kind of ruined my night. And when I thought about it the next day, I was like, I think I'm good on pizza for a while. It also gave me acid reflux, which made me realize that I had not had that for the entire month that I was on the diet. So now that I think about it, maybe I'm onto something here. So food good, diet good, uh, but everything outside of the meals, I could take it or leave it. The electrolytes are disgusting. The vitamins cost like $2 a pill. The water bottle's nice, but you're essentially paying an extra 40 bucks just to have Tom Brady's name on it. And I love the guy. 
but not that much. The exercise equipment was a pretty good deal as far as I can tell. I'll let you know if all that shit just starts breaking one day. But ultimately for a lifestyle change as drastic and as costly as this can be, I wouldn't recommend starting it off by wasting a couple hundred bucks on a bunch of the less necessary crap. Just save that money for all the fish you're gonna have to eat. I know there's probably gonna be a lot of people who watch this video and think, whoa, you went on a diet for a month? That's crazy. What are you, like a regular person? And that's fine, but I'm proud of myself for doing this. It's not that I don't normally pay attention to what I eat and try to eat as healthy as possible, but I'm certainly not very consistent about it. So every day that I would get through the entirety of without making any bad dietary choices, it felt good laying in bed that night knowing I did a good job. And the more I stacked those days on top of each other, the better I felt overall. And I also realized when I'm only having one truly bad meal every week or two, it makes it taste so much better. Cause I've earned this. I'm gonna savor this shit. Again, I know these are very basic human principles that a lot of people are gonna hear and be like, yeah, Drew, it is hard. Everyone struggles with cravings and making good choices. It's not like extremely healthy people were just born with a different brain and they never think about how good ice cream would taste right now. They just have better self-discipline than I do. Anyway, this is a diet that I've wanted to try for several years and maybe it's a good thing that Tom pretended to retire for just long enough to make me actually do it because if he did, I probably wouldn't have. I'm still kind of pissed that he took my spot on the team, but I'll try not to hold a grudge. Well, I think I have finally run out of things to say. I've been working on this video for almost two months now, and I'm ready to be done. That said, I probably won't do any other videos like this for a while, so if you liked this one and you want to support me, consider sticking around and hearing me talk about today's sponsor, which I will do now. Hi, I'm Immortal, and I'm here to tell you about today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. Have you ever been in a competitive online game when all of a sudden, at one of the most crucial moments, you have a massive lag spike that completely screws you over? Well, either your internet provider just decided you're not paying them enough, or you could be the victim of a DDoS attack. Essentially, this is when a rival player finds a way to look up your IP address, launches the attack on you, and massively slows down your internet in the process. This can be especially detrimental in a game like Old School RuneScape, which I do still play all the time and there's nothing you can do to stop me, where you have the potential to lose all of your hard-earned items without being able to do anything about it. By using ExpressVPN though, your IP address gets masked, allowing you to not only browse the internet anonymously, but it also provides protection against nefarious individuals. And where other VPNs might slow down your internet to a standstill, ExpressVPN has had almost no impact on my connection whatsoever. So I can enjoy all the benefits of it without creating a new problem in the process. You can use ExpressVPN on just about any device, so whether you're on your PC, your iPhone, your Android, your Xbox, your Wi-Fi enabled clarinet, you can connect through them and stay protected. Don't let your internet and or phone service providers snoop on all your data so they can sell it to advertisers. They don't deserve that. Sign up for ExpressVPN and keep all that shit to yourself where it belongs. And guess what, my subscribers, that's you, right? You did subscribe, right? My subscribers, or anyone viewing this video really, can get three months free of ExpressVPN by clicking the link in the description. Uh, that's also the link that's on the screen and the link that's coming out of my mouth. ExpressVPN.com slash true. Thank you so much for watching today's video and thank you again to ExpressVPN for sponsoring it. I know you guys are all probably pretty impressed right now by how well I'm able to hold my composure despite the fact that I can very clearly see the dryer that held me captive for two weeks. But I'm a new man. I have no fears. I'm not afraid of looking at the dryer. I'm only closing this door because I think it's funny. <laughs> Not because I'm scared of the dry. Also, if you want a U2s, don't forget to buy one. They're only on sale for a limited time, starting right now. So, um, go get one. See you next time.